My name is John Hyatt, and together with my business partner, Daniel Paulin, um, I'm here to tell you about the revolution. Oh, oh, is it up there? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, let's just talk about it. <laughs> okay, so we are literally two guys working in a garage that have come up with a product we believe to be revolutionary, and it is, as you can see, a small wind turbine. The shape there, the vertical, uh, the vertical axis and having the weight out at the end of the lever arm allows maximum torque, which allows it to generate a great deal of power at low tip speed. Oh, too loud? No. Closer? Okay, sorry. <laughs> there's also, there's no mast sticking up through the turbine to create turbulence, which would prevent, uh, which would rob it of about 40% of its efficiency. So I want to share that with you. That is our Eureka moment. Uh, prior to this moment, we had a great deal of test data from wind tunnels and laboratories and simulations, but this was in the real world. Um, there it goes. That's, that's not our turbine making that noise, that's the wind. That's wind at six meters per second. It's at uh, 12 miles per hour. The turbine is generating 160 watts, which translates to about 15% of an American household's needs on an annual basis. Uh, and it only costs about $1,000 to create that turbine. The turbine was whisper silent during that test, and the turbine operated at 76% efficiency. Now, I know this one's a little bit, uh, this is a little bit of hard science for you, so I'll be quick. There's a thing called Betts Law, which establishes the theoretical maximum for power that can possibly be harvested from the wind by a perfect turbine. It's 59% of, of the power that's in the wind. As you can see, the pollen turbine, which is over, to, it's the green, uh, green graph to the left there, uh, gets very close to that theoretical maximum at low tip speed. A high tip speed means noise. So all the ones, the turbines that you see out at the five, six, and seven area create a lot of noise. If you had a small turbine on your house or your car or your trailer, or a motorhome, yacht, whatever, it would be like running a vacuum cleaner or a blender all the time. You would never do it. Your neighbors would never stand for it. It will never be adopted by consumers. Ours is perfectly whisper silent. The giant industrial turbines that you see operate at about 75 to 80 percent efficiency under Betts Law, and we were at 76. This is just to prove to you that, I know you can't see it from out there, but this just proves that we were whisper silent. The, uh, the turbine um, did not contribute any noise to the ambient background noise. Um, this is just to wet your whistle a little bit. It's got a patented retractability feature. I know that L shape may look simple to you. Uh, but it took years to design, and it's also patented. So this thing condenses down to something about the size of a yoga mat. Um, so it can be mounted really, you know, on any vehicle um, or really pretty much anywhere. People always want to say, well, how do you compare to solar? First off, we're not competing with solar. We're a complement to solar. We use the same uh, off-the-shelf inverters and equipment. But, you know, I just couldn't help pointing out, at night, we beat the heck out of solar. <laughs> we're way better. There are some... Uh, there are some things to just see different iterations of it. Um, you know, you can see the mobile charging station that you could do. And of course, you know, a favorite hot topic, the Hyperloop. We haven't mounted it on the Hyperloop, but why wouldn't you? It only costs $1,000 to make them, and it generates a lot of power cheaply and safely. Thank you. John.